comfortable there. But my grandfather Bergman, he was a jewel, an absolute wonderful man. He, I never saw him that he didn't have some nickels in his pocket for me or candy. He used to bring these white sugar candies with a with a nut in the side, and they were rolled in crystal sugar. Always, always had something like that. It, it, I, I was always very impressed by him. And uh, I have a son who looks just like him, Joe. <laughs> okay. It's the image of Grandpa Fallon. What do you think, Joe? Or Grandpa Hil Bergman. What do you think Joe Hilston is also? You know, I haven't seen Joe Hilston for so many years. I saw him but, about two weeks ago. Oh, did you really? Yeah. You know, and he's got that Bergman nose and he's bald on top. Yeah. Like but he's a, still a nice looking guy, actually. Well, was Grandpa Bergman good looking? He was short and he was oh, heavy and he always had a smile on his face. Oh, and he was almost totally bald, just had friendly gray fringe around the outside. A very full face, full red face, and he loved his beer. But he loved his cigars too. And his cigars. Yeah. Huh. Hey kids. He was a great man. We're interviewing Ann Pat. I know. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Jimmy, the last one, was born in the hospital, but the rest of us were born at home. And I was born on Millbridge Street in Allentown. And what day were you born? September 18, 1927. 9, 1827. Yeah. It's easy to remember. <laughs> well, well, you were just a baby then during the Depression. Yeah, but I don't remember it. I worked behind the house where it's counter. And uh, he used to say that he'd see that beautiful pair of legs sticking out from behind the counter. <laughs> and uh, started to court me. But in the meanwhile, there were a lot of, I had a lot of other boyfriends before that. But, uh, well, he was a good looking guy. Yes, he most certainly was. I'd those those uh, wedding pictures you have. He was good looking. Which uh, which you are in too. <laughs> yeah. And Mark mentioned that just the other day when he looked at them. He yeah. said, "Look at Ian." Yeah. <laughs> Little flower girl in a yes. dress that was made by Rosella, That's your right. mom, yeah. and a bonnet made by Rosella. Yeah. They were lovely. Tim mentioned it. Tim said he was six years old. And he remembers what my gown looked like and remembers that, that mother made your outfit, your and Lorraine. Now, who was Lorraine, the other little girl? Lorraine uh, was Jim Lawfer's brother's daughter. She was six at the time. You were five. Yes. Maybe I'll go with you. Uh, I've always been adventuresome. Yeah. I probably had... Over 40 addresses in my lifetime. Well, that's because you married into the service. Right. So tell us now, you and you and Jim, what happened? You married about six months after he came back from the service, his first... His first tour, yeah. Yeah. And that was in what years, Pat? That was in 46. So it was after... He was after. discharged in 46. And then in 51... 52, he went back in and uh, served in Korea and Vietnam. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he served in Vietnam. Oh, yeah. When he was in Vietnam, that was in the, about 1966. He was one of the first troops that went in there. They built the airstrips. He was a, uh, an air traffic controller. But they had to lay the strips down first, so he was in that. And when he left, when he left there, his ulcer erupted, and he ended up in the Philippines having surgery on his stomach. And then they sent him to Philadelphia, where he stayed there in the hospital for six months. And then he served his time, rest of his time, and he retired in '69 in Pittsburgh. But during the time, from the time he was in the hospital till he retired, we stayed in Pittsburgh with children. But earlier, though, in your life, you traveled a lot as a military bride. Oh yes, we spent three years in North Carolina, and then three years in Santa Ana, California, and then three years in Hawaii. Three nope. years in North Carolina again. 
and uh, picked up a child along the way in every st- Yeah, <laughs> so, every so t- your firstborn then, Joe, where was he born? Joe and Jack were both born in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. And then Peggy was born in North Carolina. Paul was born in Honolulu. Uh, Mark was born back in North Carolina. Oh, Teresa was born in California. Uh-huh. And then Paul in Honolulu and Mark back in North Carolina again. So they're from all over the country. Yes, yes. Now, during the time, all this time, you had what kind of contact with the rest of your family, with my dad, Tom, your mom, your dad? Uh, there was no email at the time. <laughs> And phone calls were, you know, well, I used to phone mother regularly, but with your dad, uh, he would call me once in a while, and we would write letters back and forth. I don't think any of us ever, at least I never saved any of them. I moved so many times that every time I'd move, I'd throw out everything that I'd collected because it was it was a chore to keep carrying things around. Sure. And I often look back and wonder what became of different things yes. that I had through the years. Now, did your mom and dad write to you? Yes, mother did, not dad. Uh-huh. Of course, you were a very young uh, bride. I was 19. You were not... <laughs> long at all. I mean, first you met Jim when you were 14. You were sort of, I suppose, you know, considered his waiting for him until you were 16 or 17. Yeah. No, you met him when you were 16. I met him when I was 16. And, we and you married were married at 19. 19. And he was away two and a half years. Right, but so we, we you wrote didn't... regularly. <laughs> we wrote back and forth. Okay, tell us their names. Joe is the oldest. He lives in Arlington, Texas. And he has four beautiful daughters. And a, a beautiful wife, too, who visited us two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And then Jack lives in Hawaii. Jack's wife is Sue, and he has two lovely children, Jay and Sarah. And the next one is uh, Peggy whom I live with, and she's married to Stan, and then uh, Teresa, Teresa lives in Exeter, California, and she has one daughter, Shelly, and then uh, Paul, who now lives, also lives in Exeter, California, and he's just, he's putting a pool in to entice me to come out and visit, <laughs> they're in the process of it right now. And he has a stepdaughter. He doesn't have any children of his own. Mm-hmm. And then my baby is Mark, who you just saw yes. here. Yeah. And he lives in La Mirada, California. Mm-hmm. So there's three of them still in California. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Peggy's the only one back here, back east. Mm-hmm. So you lived in California, well, For till 20, when? 20 years, until 19... Uh, 1995. We went out there in 76 and came back here in 1995, so that was 19 years. Yeah. And uh, I loved California, but I wanted to come back with Peggy. Yeah. Peggy left because of the earthquake, didn't she? The earthquake did some damage to their house, and she it frightened her. And she said, I have... Um, she said, I'm thinking of moving back to Ohio. And I said, well, I think it's a great idea. Stan's mother was back here and wasn't well and was having a hard time taking care of herself. And I, Peggy, I said, well, you know, if you feel that way, you should go. And she said, well, I'm not going to do it. And I said, why not? She said, I'm not going to go and leave you behind. Uh, she wouldn't leave without me. And I said, well, maybe I'll go with you. I did. And what what yeah. kind of things did you and your mom do together when you were a married woman with children living in Pittsburgh with your husband? Well, I used to take her shopping once or twice a week. Took her to Mass every Sunday. Was Grandpa, your dad, still alive? No, no. This was after he, he died in 1963. Mm-hmm. And uh, when Mark was an infant, and we lived in North Carolina at the time. 
but when we moved back to Pittsburgh in 65, he was gone. So I would take her and have her for dinner regularly. What? Bring her over for cards. She loved to play cards. She? 500. She carried a deck of cards in her purse in case she could get a game. Uh -huh. So, uh, just like you, you're quite a card player. I don't player. carry a deck of cards, but I'm ready for a card game anytime. Yeah. I love yes. to play cards. I find and and so, so with Tom as well. Yeah. We forced them to when, uh, first. When, when I was young, we lived on uh, Bay Ridge Avenue, I remember. My dad belonged to a card club, a poker club. And they used to meet at different homes. And I think once a month it met at our house. So I would stand and look at all the all the hands and watch them play. I loved it. <laughs> That's how I learned to play poker. Watching all those men. I, I still remember their names. That's funny, after all these years. One bright and guiding light That taught me wrong from right I found in my mother's eyes Those fairy tales she told one road all paved with gold I found in my mother's eyes Just like a wandering sparrow One lonely soul I was the straight and narrow To reach my goal God's gift from up above, one real unselfish love I found in my mother's eyes. This is November 18th, 1969, and here they are, the Fallon sisters and their beautiful mother. Just traveling along, singing. 
singing a song side by side oh we ain't got a barrel of February 12, 1983. On the road again, just can't wait to get on the road again. The life I love is making music with my friends. And I can't wait to get on the road again. On the road again, going places that I've never been. Seeing things that I may never see again And I can't wait to get on the road again On the road again Like a bag of chickens We go down the highway Way 
you're the best of friends. Insist that the world keeps turning our way. And our way is on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. The life I love is making music with my friends. And I can't wait to get on the road again. On the road again. Like a band of gypsies, we go down the highway. We're the best of friends. Insisting that the world keep turning our way. And our way is on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. The life I love is making music with my friends. And I can't wait to get on the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. Kiss me sweet, then we'll go Flying high in birdland, high in the sky Up above, we're in love And there's the weepy old willow He really knows how to cry That's how I cry in my pillow if you should tell me farewell and goodbye, love the my birdland with her low, kiss me sweet, then we'll go flying high in birdland, high in the sky up above. We're in love. Will everyone here kindly step to the rear and let a winner lead the way? Here's where we separate the notes from the noise, the men from the boys, the rose from the poison ivy back in the bunch. I came up with a hunch, this was an up and atom day. It's one of those spells where you hear the right bells and your horoscope tells you to say, will everyone here kindly step to the rear and let a winner lead the way? I hear those trumpets begin to blare, and now I'm Washington along the Delaware. Will everyone here kindly step to the rear and let a winner lead the way? Here's where we separate the duck from the quack, the ace from the pack, the pip from the Macintosh is back in the group. I came up with a scoop. This was the time to rise and say, I've got in my eye such a jubilant sky that the 4th of July will seem gray. Will everyone here kindly step to the rear and let a winner lead the way? And let a winner lead the way? Who wouldn't love you? Who wouldn't care? You're so enchanting, people must stare. You're the dream the dreamers want to dream about. You're the breath of spring that lovers get about or mad about. Who wouldn't love you? Who wouldn't buy? The west side of heaven if you wink your eye. You're the answer to my every prayer, darling. Who wouldn't love you? Who wouldn't care? Who wouldn't love you? Who wouldn't care? The 
stars shine above you, so linger a while. They whisper, I love you, yet linger a while. And when you are far away, each hour will seem a day. I've something to tell you, so linger a while. Nighty night until tomorrow, nighty night, oh what sweet sorrow to be parting dear from you. With a farewell kiss, or two, or three, nighty-night, while my arms take you, nighty-night, till birdies wake you, dream of me and just sleep tight, darling night.